Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. I am Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. Four articles have been published by Al Jazeera that points out how India's ruling party, the right-wing Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party, has been able to benefit greatly thanks to Facebook which is owned by now Metaverse and Facebook includes WhatsApp. It also includes Instagram. And another aspect of the series of four investigative articles is how a company owned by one of India's richest men, who also happens to be one of Asia's richest men, Mukesh Ambani was instrumental in spreading misinformation, disinformation, fake news, false news, all aimed at either supporting the BJP, the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, or undermining its political opponents. And this was done by exploiting a loophole in India's election laws. Let me welcome to the studio here a person who is the lead author of these four articles. I'm happy to have with me here Kumar Sambhav Srivastav of the Reporters Collective, which spent a year working on this investigation together with another organization called Ad Watch, represented by Nantara. Ranganathan. Kumar, if you can summarize how the BJP has been benefited by Facebook, because today this matter is huge, it's come up in Parliament, if you can summarize the main points in your series of reports. Sure, thank you for having me here. Uh, so basically in our four part of uh, four part series tells two important things. One, that Bharti Janta Party got a uh, lot of visibility and a lot of traction by surrogate advertisers or ghost advertisers. So in the Indian election law, you're not allowed to place advertisement for any political candidate or a political party if you are not authorized by that candidate or if you are not funded by that candidate. Essentially what you call surrogate advertising. Correct. And this is banned because it essentially allows illegal money to flow in the election if it's not uh, if the political candidate is not accountable for that money. Also for the content, uh, if somebody else is putting an ad which is misinformation or which is derogatory to opposition or false, or false information, then the candidate or the political party can just dissociate themselves. They are not held accountable for that. And for these reasons, in the print uh, media and electronic media, our Indian law have always banned this kind of uh, advertisement. But since the advent of social media, uh, the Election Commission of India knew that, you know, this kind of surrogate advertising also happen in social media. They said that they'll regulate it later. This is in 2013, what they said. But so far, they haven't brought any regulation to regulate surrogate uh, advertisements in social media. This loophole hole was exploited by at least 23 advertisers who did not have any information of who they are funded by. Even some of them did not have any information of who the, really these advertisers are. And they spent over 58 million rupees in 22 months that we That's uh, correct, between February at. 2019 and November 2020, right. after an analysis of over 536,000 advertisements. And the whistleblower, Frances Hogan, uh, she's pointed out how uh, associations like the Internet and Mobile Association of India lobbied with the Election Commission of India to ensure that no regulations were put on these. Correct. And Facebook itself took some actions, but those actions were mostly targeted at the opposition. So uh, right before the 2019 election, they put uh, they brought down a lot of num uh, surrogate advertisers, but more than 95% of those advertisers were related to the Congress party, which is the main opposition, while a very small number of BJP surrogate advertisers were brought down. But in our investigation, we found that despite that action, 
uh, a large number of these surrogates continued to support or promote BJP. One of them was a company funded by Reliance Geo. And this company actually calls itself a news and media organization, but it promotes advertisement on Facebook uh, by burning money invested by or sort of N -E pumped in by Reliance. N E W J, new emerging world of journalism, which sounds like news. Correct. It's very much like a news. And, and they targeted Indians before uh, in small towns, in villages, people who are not so well educated. And all this happened when there were a series of elections, local elections that took place. And, in, and your investigation shows that all of them were aimed at helping the Bharatiya Janata Party or simultaneously putting down its political opponents. Most of them were. There was some viral advertisement just to get, you know, uh, eyeballs of its readers. So there'll be some, in the, it, there'll be a relentless stream of viral video content and in between very carefully sparred advertisement to promote uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, BJP and its other candidates while also uh, mocking the opposition leaders in those advertisements. And you've also pointed out in your reports how the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, in terms of money, they got a lower rate exactly. in, in comparison to others and they had to pay less money and all of this is on account because I mean Facebook does is apparently a metaverse is not answerable to anybody I mean it decides what its advertising rates are going to be and these vary as you pointed out wildly they decide what is relevant what results in engagement so it seems to be completely arbitrary the way in which the BJP has been favored in terms of uh, uh, they've been able to reach that many more people by paying less money in comparison to its right. political opponents. So Facebook's algorithm works to sort of keep the users hooked to its newsfeed and that's why they say that whatever is more relevant to the user, if the user is being shown that, we'll sort of subsidize those ads so that more and more relevant content go to people. Now if something is polarizing, something is politically or emotionally very hyper uh, emo uh, which, which, which generates emotions, hyper emotions among people, obviously they are more inclined to engage with that. So there are two problems with that. One, this, uh, some, if the, if the audience is more inclined to like the BJP content, it will be cheaper. Those ads would be cheaper for them. But at the same time, for the same audience, opposition, if want to target those audience, it will be much more expensive for them because Facebook thinks that the Congress content is not relevant to the BJP following. That's correct. And that's why it will be very expensive for them. So it generates more and more polarization. Apart from that, it also gives an unequal uh, field in the election. The, it, it skews the competition because someone, if it's getting cheaper ads, they are going to reach more voters for less money, while someone who's smaller and who has a smaller following and not putting polarizing content or emotionally charged content, they will be charged more and they will reach less people. That's right. And, and whereas Facebook uh, gave its standard replies and so did the uh, person who set up this new company, new emerging world of journalism, how significant is it that the spokespersons of the Election Commission of India, the Bharti Janata Party's own spokespersons, those who head their information technology cell, and of course, representatives of Reliance Industries Limited, headed by India's richest man, uh, or, or, or certainly he's one of the two richest men yeah. and, and Asia's richest man. I mean, how significant is the fact that they've chosen not to respond? That's very important because at least in the case of, say, this new uh, organization, we, we looked at the document and the association uh, document of this company actually shows that the investor has say in deciding guidelines of the content, which means Reliance companies have say in what content this organization would be putting out on social media and we didn't get any response from them on those questions. Similarly about uh, from BJP or Election Commission of India which is the most important thing they are supposed to regulate this whole it's thing. It's a constitutional authority. Exactly and they have not responded to it which is uh, really strange. I mean we are still hoping that they'll respond and we'll put those out at least on our website on the Reporters Collective uh, and uh, if they're listening I hope that they do respond to okay. these questions. Thank you so much, Kumar, for giving us your views and uh, throwing a little bit of light as to what went on behind these series of four investigative reports which have been published 
in Al Jazeera and in a sense it follows up similar reports which have been published by other organizations including the Wall Street Journal, um, uh, BuzzFeed, Aussie.com, Time.com etc etc. And so Kumar Sambhav has clearly told you how the series of reports that he has helmed which have been published in Al Jazeera clearly indicate how Facebook, owned by Metaverse, apparently has gone out of his way to politically help India's ruling right-wing Bharatiya Janata Party and at the same time try to put down its political opponents. Thank you for being with us.